Muskets and rifles were not the only weapons used during the American Revolution. Can you believe musical instruments were also considered valuable weapons for soldiers? Today we've invited two rangers, Jim Hollister from Minuteman National Historical Park in Concord, Massachusetts, and our very own ranger Jason Howell to share with you about two of those instruments, the drum and the bagpipes. Take it away, gentlemen. My name is Jim Hollister. Ranger I'm a park ranger sitting at, at Minuteman Desk National indoors, Historical Park, so I'm very uh, pleased to be with you once again. And now, in terms of drums, um, so there's different reasons why armies of this period used drummers. Now, um, we always have this image of the British soldiers marching in step. Where did that come from? Uh, it actually is sort of a latecomer to the battlefields, and it starts in the 1690s. So the late 17th, early 18th century is when they begin, armies in Europe begin um, practicing a cadenced step. And it's not just for show. Um, there's very specific reason. So one, uh, the technology improved. So before, armies were carrying matchlock muskets, which required the infantrymen who were carrying them to hold a lit piece of cord called match and gunpowder. So lit match, gunpowder, a uh, whole lot of nope going on there. So anyway, they, they have to keep some distance. They have to keep social distancing so that they don't blow up. Um, however, with the advent of the flintlock and its adoption by European armies in the 17th and even into the early 18th century, this conversion was still happening. Um, you don't have to keep a, a, an ignition source lit you have instantaneous ignition uh, from flint striking against steel and igniting your gunpowder. So now you can concentrate your, your infantrymen, your foot soldiers with the muskets, um, and you can concentrate your fire. They also combine muskets and pikemen. So before, um, you needed pikemen to defend. Pikes are long 16-foot spears. And you needed them to defend the musketeers who, when they're reloading, it takes a long time, and they're effectively helpless. Um, but you see a development as the uh, the flintlock becomes adopted of bayonets. Uh, early bayonets were plug bayonets that literally just um, fit inside the muzzle, um, but that was later improved with a socket that fit over the muzzle. I know I'm rambling here, but I'm getting to something. So it fits over the muzzle that allows a soldier to load and shoot with the bayonet fixed. So now you see you know, the classic infantry fire system, uh, excuse me, uh, infantry uh, weapon system of firearm and bayonet, close order. So the cadence step comes in when, you know, soldiers marching uh, along a road or across a field, you know, on a route march are usually in a column, whether it's columns of companies, um, you know, meaning about, say, 15 men across, or half companies, uh, about five or six men across columns of platoons. Very, very common. But in order to face an enemy in battle, they have to deploy from a column into a line, again, to bring all that firepower to bear against the enemy at, at relatively close range, you know, usually within about 100 yards. Um, so before you had drums and cadence step, um, marching to the battlefield, so everybody's kind of shuffling along and getting spread out. So a cadence step, allows the men to stay closer together so that when they deploy, it's much quicker and it goes a lot more smoothly. So in a combat situation, um, you know, being able to deploy quickly saves lives. So that's one reason why you have drummers who are going to beat the cadence and allow the men to maintain their step so that they're not tripping over each other and they can deploy from a column into line or back into a column much more quickly. Another reason for drummers is for commands. Um, so there's commands for um, loading and firing. There's commands for ceasefire. Um, you know, there's all sorts of commands that are given by the drum and also commands in camp as well. Um, and then, of course, the last reason is for show. You know, this very impressive. Now you're in line, you're marching towards the enemy, and, you know, the drums are, are, are beating, and it just creates you know, quite a, a martial noise um, that can be unsettling to the enemy. So lots of reasons for the drum. Hi, this is Ranger Howell coming to you from the Loyalist Monument in Moores Creek National Battlefield. And today we're going to talk about the Highland bagpipes. Um, the Highland bagpipes, what they were used for in war, um, just like the drums, they were used to signal um, 
uh, to march forward, to retreat. Um, now they couldn't give a cadence to, uh, to load weapons and fire, but what's popular about this instrument and why the Highlands use it, Highlanders used it, it was used to install fear. When you heard these um, pipes coming down the road, um, soldiers, other soldiers from different countries, or they would hear them pipes and they would know that the Highlanders were coming. The Highlanders, uh, the Highland Scots, um, during that time period, they were kind of like uh, your shock troops, the people you send in, the, and when they come in, they, other armies knew that they were going to carry all kinds of, uh, of knives, they had swords, um, they were huge, broad-shouldered men, they were, and they were feared by many people. Um, so when these pipes started swirling and you heard them miles down the road, you knew you were in for a fight. So <clears throat> today we're going to uh, play a little tune for you. Um, I'm going to play an 18th century tune. It's called High Road to Gearlock. Um, and we don't know if it was played here at Moores Creek, but it's potentially a tune that could have been played. Thank <laughs> you. 